Good morning, everyone. Got a full house here today. It's great. Well, first of all, let me uh, thank everyone for, uh, for being here today and coming to the auditorium. And on behalf of AHN and Highmark Health, it is our special privilege to welcome U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen to Pittsburgh to offer her few remarks on health care, access, and affordability. We also are pleased to welcome U.S. Congresswoman Summer Lee. Secretary Yellen and Congresswoman Lee have had a busy morning already touring our new skin cancer center at West Penn and participating in a roundtable discussion with healthcare economic and several AHN uh, healthcare providers and community leaders. Before we turn to the microphone, over to the Congresswoman and the Secretary, I want to express our gratitude, uh, uh, not just for the Secretary's visit to our hospital in the city, but for the incredible stewardship over the last three years. Without your leadership and without the continued support of the Biden administration, the healthcare sector and the entire U.S. economy would be in a much different place than it is today. We appreciate all you have done and for your career in public service. From the Federal Reserve to the U.S. Treasury, from her time in academia, for the last three decades, Secretary Yellen has been one of the world's most important shapers of economic policy, and we are thrilled to be learning from her today. But before we hear from the Secretary, we're going to ask, and we are excited to hear from Congresswoman Lee. Congresswoman? Thank you, former executive. You keep that title, right? Yeah, I guess I am. Yeah. yeah, I'm never sure. I just want to be polite. But good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much to Allegheny Health Network and West Penn Hospital for hosting us this morning. And as our former executive said, it was an incredible tour. So thank you so much to all the doctors uh, who took us on this morning's tour to show us the innovative work that's happening here, to our nurses and healthcare workers for your uh, tireless uh, work day in and day out to help those who need it the most, to the patients who shared their stories with us uh, at, at the round table, and especially to Secretary Yellen and President Biden for working with Congress to make health care more accessible and more affordable. And that's why we're here today, to, um, to center the health care savings made available through the American Rescue Plan and the Inflation Reduction Act. These pieces of legislation are lowering the cost of prescription drug prices for Medicare beneficiaries, including free life-saving vaccines. The IRA reigns in pharmaceutical price gouging. It enables the federal government to hold drug makers accountable to patients by making sure they can't overcharge for needed medicines like insulin. And for our most vulnerable populations, the legislation improved the Medicare subsidy, giving much needed relief to low income enrollees like seniors or persons with disabilities who struggle with the ever increasing costs of prescriptions. For more than a million Pennsylvanians with diabetes, 76,000 folks in my district alone, we won the fight to ensure that if you have health insurance, you'll pay no more than $35 for your insulin. Now we're fighting to cap the, pr the price of insulin and other expensive medication for every person, no matter their insurance status, and expand these caps to other medications you need to keep your families healthy. For 2.8 million Medicare beneficiaries in Pennsylvania, we won uh, the fight to give Medicare the power to negotiate dramatically lower costs for the 10 most expensive medications to treat blood clots, diabetes, and more. This is why I'm in Congress fighting to expand Medicare coverage for every American. Yet, as we promote these positive healthcare gains for patients, families, and vulnerable populations, we must remain vigilant and committed to addressing gaps in care and equity and supporting our healthcare workers. This is why I've introduced legislation to increase hazard pay for healthcare workers and been on the front lines of the fight to ensure all nurses have what our AHN nurses, uh, union nurses have secured through their historic contract, fair pay, safe staffing, and dignity on the job to care for their patients. And Congress will continue fighting to expand health care access and equity by passing Medicare for All one day, which will ensure every person in any age, income, or background has high quality health care. I'm committed to working with the administration on these initiatives and to listening to personal stories from our local health care workers and leaders and patients uh, as we move to improve health care access and services moving forward. So we thank you 
so much for being here today. And thank you so much to the secretary for, for coming here and joining us. Thank you, Congresswoman Lee. Uh, before I bring up the next speaker, I do want to thank all of you and all of our workers throughout our system uh, because you have put us on the map, you got the attention of the Biden administration, and you got some very high-level officials here today that want to tour our facilities and hear from all of you on what, uh, what we've been doing here to change uh, the quality of health care and the access to uh, people in western Pennsylvania. So let's give a nice, warm welcome to the U.S. Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen. Secretary. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you and good morning, everyone. I'm glad to be here in Pittsburgh at West Penn Hospital uh, to see the exciting innovations in healthcare and to hear about how um, your system is improving access and reducing costs uh, for Americans to be able to get the health care they deserve. I also want to talk about the Biden, what the Biden administration is doing to lower costs. Over the past three years, the Biden administration has driven the strongest economic comeback of our lifetimes. Our country has seen particularly strong GDP growth and inflation is cooled sooner and more quickly following the pandemic than in other large advanced economies. This morning's report on inflation underscores the significant progress we have made in our fight to bring down inflation. Overall, inflation is down by around two-thirds since its peak. The prices of key household expenses like gas, eggs, and airline fares have gone down. In January, the headline consumer price index declined to 3.1%, and that's six percentage points below its peak in June of 2022. And at the same time, the recession that many forecasters predicted we would need to see to get inflation down, that hasn't materialized. Instead, the American economy continues to grow, and we also have an historically strong labor market. More Americans are working, and unemployment has been below 4% for the longest streak in 50 years. Household median wealth grew by 37% between 2019 and 2022, and that is the largest three-year increase on record. And because real wages, which is wages after inflation, they've gone up, Americans have more purchasing power. A worker earning the median wage can today be better. So we're pursuing an economic agenda that does this from investing in infrastructure and manufacturing to create well-paying jobs to lowering costs. Our work to give families more breathing room starts with energy costs. I traveled to Boston last month where I talked about how the administration took action after Russia's invasion of Ukraine to prevent spikes in energy costs. Though we're focused on making historic investments in transitioning toward clean energy in the medium and long run, Record domestic oil and natural gas production have addressed our immediate needs. Energy prices have declined over the past year and a half, with gas now down around $1.90 a gallon from its high in June of 2022. Thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act, taxpayers can also claim credits for energy improvements that will allow them to save on their utility bills. And in the years to come, the IRA will lower costs for clean energy technologies, making clean energy even more affordable for American families. For decades, health care costs have also put pressures on the budgets of middle class households. Here in Pennsylvania, health care spending per capita has increased since the 1990s. Across the country, middle income households spend around one-fifth of their income 
on health care related expenses. And almost half of all adults say it's difficult to afford health care costs. These high costs have real impacts. One in five adults report they haven't filled a prescription because of the cost. One in 10 say they have cut pills or skipped doses. I had an early view into the importance of health care since my father was a doctor. But all of us have experienced firsthand and seen for our families and friends what a difference access to good health care makes. The president and I believe it's unacceptable that some Americans need to choose between their health and other needs, like putting food on the table. And this isn't just a public health issue, it's an economic one. As Treasury Secretary, I see the strain high health care costs can put on family budgets and know that families need more breathing room. And having affordable health care leads to stronger financial security for middle class families. It saves Americans and our country money. And for all these reasons, the President and I are committed to ensuring that Americans can afford the care that they deserve. Since the start of this administration, we've worked to make affordable health care, including prescription drugs, a reality for more Americans. The prior administration tried to roll back the Affordable Care Act, jeopardizing protections for pre-existing conditions. It consistently undermined health care exchanges where Americans can sign up for the plans they want. From 2016 to 2020, enrollment stayed flat. In contrast, over 8 million Americans have gained coverage since President Biden took office. In 2022, the uninsured rate dropped to an historic low of just under 8%. And in the open enrollment period that ended just a few weeks ago, over 21 million Americans signed up for health care coverage through the Affordable Care Act's marketplace, and this is an all-time record. As we've expanded coverage, we've saved families hundreds of dollars, and let me just explain how we did this. First, we started with premiums. The American Rescue Plan lowered costs for health care by expanding tax credits. Families save an average of $40 per person per month on premiums, and one-third of customers find coverage for $10 or less per month. The Inflation Reduction Act extended the American Rescue Plan's low premiums. Nearly 15 million people are saving an average of $800 per year. Second, because the drug companies shouldn't be able to unfairly profit off hardworking Americans, the IRA helps level the playing field by allowing Medicare to negotiate prices for key prescription drugs. This is projected to reduce the deficit by over $95 billion. The IRA also requires drug companies to pay rebates to Medicare if they raise prices faster than inflation. Because there's no justification for this same drug becoming more expensive over time. In 2023, these rebates saved some seniors on Medicare using these drugs as much as $600 per dose. Third, the IRA lowers the cost of common health treatments. It caps the cost of insulin at $35 a month for Medicare beneficiaries. For many with Medicare, it also makes important vaccines available with no out-of-pocket costs, and it caps out-of-pocket spending on prescription drugs. This prescription drug cap is projected to lead to annual savings of $400 per person. Beyond the American Rescue Plan and the Inflation Reduction Act, we're also taking action to fight against unfair and surprise bills 
that hurt everyday Americans. We're working to give Americans more predictability and control from protecting consumers from unfair medical debt to cracking down on misleading insurance products that result in medical bills of thousands of dollars. Well, there are other actions the President and I would like to take to bring health care costs down even more. That includes making the low premiums we've put in place permanent. We also need to make sure Americans access the support that's available. For example, we're doing all we can so that everyone eligible for Medicaid or CHIP coverage knows that they must take action to renew their coverage because states restarted their annual Medicaid and CHIP reviews last year. And I encourage anyone here who's eligible to complete their renewal if they haven't yet done so. We're also progressing full steam ahead on other priorities, such as increasing transparency in healthcare plans so that Americans aren't stuck in plans that don't meet their needs. Across all our work, we remain focused on fairness, working to narrow gaps in coverage and in care. The work we've done and have ahead on health care is crucial. And it's motivated by the same values that motivate much of our economic agenda. By making health care more accessible and affordable, we're helping middle-class Americans live healthier, more financially secure lives. These Americans are at the heart of our economy, and they'll continue to drive our country's success. So thank you all for allowing me to visit this impressive healthcare center and for joining me today. Thank you.